lockdown. We have supermarket shelves that are empty, something we do not know in a long time. We have schools closed, kids at home all the time, driving us up the wall. Some of us are worried about our parents or grandparents who are in the risk group. There are other worries as well, <clears throat> as you keep watching mortality rates go up and there seems to be no end in sight. People sometimes stuck in small apartments and some having financial anxieties. I would say some, in fact, many having financial anxieties. In this webinar, we will discuss how to survive lockdown. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Radhika Ji. I'm founder of That First. I'm author of Mastering Pranayam and teacher of Samaya Shri Vidya. I have made a short presentation with some of the points that we will cover today in this webinar. We can discuss these points. You can ask questions for that. You can use either the chat or you can unmute yourself and speak um, if you like. After every uh, slide or topic, um, you can ask your questions. You can pose questions if you have any. And if not, we will go on to the next topic. So, and we will also have time for questions right at the end of this presentation. I have not kept any end time for this session. We will continue this session as long as there are questions and there are people who are participating. Okay. So I will share my presentation with you. Can you all see that? Yes. Very good. So, how to survive lockdown or any other crisis? So, you understand that while this is a very difficult time and we all are going through this difficult time, it is a very unique situation in history that the entire globe is going through such a crisis together. There have been pandemics in the past, but we have never been that connected. So people have not gone through such a experience before. And this is the first time in history that it is also at such a scale. However, this human tragedy unfolds the things that we discuss today can also be used to manage other crisis situations. There may be other times when you have financial difficulties or problems in the family or situations that are out of your control. And some of the things that we discuss today, some of the guidelines and some of the tips that we're gonna talk about can also be used for any other crisis. We're talking about positive life management. And one of the first things I like to say here is that true character always shines through in difficult times. Those who are selfish and egotistical in difficult times spread negative messages, create problems for themselves as well as others, so you have seen that there are people who are trying to make use of this terrible, difficult time for people to use this for their own benefit, for their own selfish purpose, to make a profit out of it. And 
those who stay positive and have the integrity will go through this difficult time knowing that even these will pass. Whatever we discuss today in this session, please remember that none of these methods are some miraculous methods which are gonna make all your problems disappear. There are no miracles that are gonna take place and it's going to be a difficult time. We should understand that, prepare ourselves for it, prepare our families for it and we will go through this together. There are some very good people, um, hardworking people who are working on this problem and we will find a solution. But don't expect within this session to learn a few techniques that are going to make all your problems go away. Having said that <laughs> up front, in this webinar, we're going to discuss some tips and guidelines. These tips and guidelines are actually suitable for everybody. While you may have certain specific issues, it is obviously not possible in this session to cover specific issues for a person but these are more general guidelines. And so as you can see, they include things like daily routine and attitude. And I would say that daily routine and attitude are really the foundation of how to go through difficult situation in life, how to survive lockdown. There are some do's and don'ts that I will mention here. There are also a couple of exercises or techniques. I wanted to share a couple of boosters, immune boosters with you for your immune system. A few tips on anxiety management, something that will help you manage home office if you have the children at home all the time. And also if you have then too much time on your hand, <clears throat> because you don't have children or you don't have to work. How do you keep yourself occupied? And finally, I hope that you don't have to, but if you should be tested positive, what are some of the things you can do? So let's come to our first slide. And this is daily routine. As I said, this is the absolute foundation. And without daily routine, a good structured day, it is very difficult to go through life, even when life is pretty good. So you can imagine the importance of daily routine in difficult circumstances. Wake up every day at the same time. <laughs> It sounds simple, but I do know a lot of people who don't do that. It is a part of disciplined lifestyle. Having regular meals at the same time every day. Now, this might be actually easier now than before because everybody is at home, almost everybody. Not those who are in essential services, who are working very hard, but the rest of us are at home and it is much easier to establish a regular routine where you have regular meals. Also very important is exercise every day at the same time. <clears throat> Since most of us are at home now, one does tend to kind of get a bit lazy because you don't go out, which is why we need to <clears throat> counterbalance with exercise. And last but not the least, sleep every day at the same time. It is important to regulate our sleep cycle. This is only possible when you wake up at the same time and you sleep at the same time every day. 
And while these may seem extremely simple things, they are, in fact, the most important things in managing your life during a crisis, any kind of crisis. To help you do that, you can set alarms on your phone, set alerts, and remember that routine and structure is even more important for children. They get cranky if they don't have a nice routine. So, any questions so far related to daily routine? So I think that's fine. I think that was simple enough. So we go back to our sharing. The second part, which was attitude, as I said, daily routine and attitude are really the foundation of positive lifestyle or positive life management. And the first thing you need to understand is that these times are difficult, but they will pass. And while you're stuck at home with the children driving you crazy or having to work as well as manage family, you think, you know, time is really slowing down, it seems, and it seems to be endless, but it will pass. And maybe a few weeks from now, a few months from now, you will look back and say, hmm, that was a crazy time. So rest assured, this too will pass. There have been pandemics before, and those have also passed. And this one will pass too. If you're working, whatever work you do, do it to the best of your ability. As we say in yoga, in the Bhagavad Gita, yoga karma sri kal shalam. Kal shalam means excellence. Yoga is work in excellence, excellent work. So whatever you do, do it to the best of your ability. Another point is don't keep waiting for the crisis to end to start new projects. I have already started hearing people say, oh, no, we can discuss this later, or let's wait until this is over. Don't postpone things. Don't keep waiting. There are a lot of things that can be done even given the means that we have. We have amazing technologies at our disposal today. So there are a lot of things that we can do. You don't have to keep waiting. I am aware that there are certain things you cannot do because you simply cannot go out or meet people. But there are certain things we can do from home using this wonderful technologies that we do have at our fingertips these days. Next, be compassionate. Do something for others, however small it may be, however insignificant you think it is, it matters. In times like these, we can very easily become selfish, self-centered, and egotistical. It's totally natural. You're not a bad person for thinking about yourself and your own family, but make an effort think how it is for others. If you just look around you, you will definitely see somebody who is worse off than you. And whatever little you can do for this person, do it. So some of the things that you can do during this time First and foremost, as I said, stick to your daily routine. Another thing is eat healthy food. While I know that a lot of people have been stockpiling and so others are faced with 
empty shelves in supermarkets or have not stocked up enough, as far as possible, eat healthy food. Don't start increasing consumption of sweets, chocolates, fried foods, alcohol. Don't start smoking. And doing things that you know are definitely not healthy. So continue to eat healthy food. Light food, have enough of fruit, vegetables, all the things that you know, you already know what's good for you. So do that. Exercise daily. We will come to the section on exercising or whatever little one can do given the circumstances. So do that. You can meditate. Meditate if you have guidance. If you don't have guidance, you can do a little breath awareness. But if you have had guidance, you have been trained, given a systematic practice, then you have more time to do that. Otherwise, for those who haven't got any guidance, have not got a systematic practice, you can do <clears throat> a little bit of breath awareness. Very important is to plan a small project. It could be something very simple, but if you have a small project which you can complete in say three to four weeks, for example, tidying up your cupboards, decluttering your house, it's a small little project and you will feel extremely satisfied after that. So this is a small little project which you can start. You can also start this project with your children. The children also can have a small little project that they like to do. They can start a scrapbook, you know, or um, a photo album. So these small projects can be lifesavers. Talk to your family and friends on a daily basis. Many of you have been separated, so keep in touch on a regular basis, but do not keep indulging in negativity. Don't encourage these doomsday prophets. Be positive, be cheerful, make an effort to be cheerful. Keep in touch also with other friends and acquaintances. It's been very nice for me personally as well. A lot of people who I'd lost touch with, old friends, wrote to me asking how things are here in Germany. I got in touch with some friends and acquaintances, asking them how they, th how they are. And that's just nice to know that someone cares. So do that, something positive. Set yourself an achievable goal, such as completing an online course. So if you are stuck, you can use this time to do something productive, such as an online course. Why not? Reading books, we all have reading to catch up on, I'm sure. And so you can make yourself a nice little list of books you want to read. And that's, that's a nice thing to do. So anything you'd like to ask at this point of time? Any questions from anyone? Anyone like to ask anything, clarify anything before we continue? No? All good? In that case, I will continue. The next slide. Don't. There are quite a few don'ts. And um, one thing you can definitely do is to turn off the television, which you have running constantly in the background. So don't have the TV running constantly in the background. Instead, just watch the news once or twice a day. 
continuously staring at the news, looking at news sites and watching the mortality rate going up is not helping. It's not useful. So don't drive yourself crazy looking at the rising number of infections and mortality rate. This is really not helpful. Also don't spread negative messages of doomsday and don't encourage these either from others. So don't do it and don't encourage others who are doing it. Try to be positive and stay positive. And as I mentioned earlier, don't increase your consumption of coffee, tea, soft drinks, sweets, alcohol, and you will find that simply by not doing some of these things, you will have slightly more peaceful and calmer approach. I think this continuously staring at the news and looking at all these awful um, sensational news that we are getting right now from the media causes a lot of anxiety. And this anxiety is then reflected again in our behavior. We get angry, irritable with family, with children, get into fights, get snappy, and start off on a kind of a cycle which spirals into this terrible negativity. So don't is a good message here. Don't indulge in these. Physical exercise. I think this is very important. And some of you do know how to do asanas. Now asanas are a wonderful thing that you can do at home on your own. Those of you who don't know how to do asanas can look at some tutorials that are on YouTube. And um, the only thing you need to care, take care about then is that you do not do anything difficult, anything complicated. And definitely don't try to do a headstand if you have never done it before, because these are dangerous things. If you fall, you can severely hurt yourself. And nobody wants to go to the hospital anyway, but at this time, you, you surely don't want to end up in hospital. So do simple asanas. Do warm up and stretching. You can, if you have a skipping rope or even a rope, you can skip on the spot. This is very good cardiac exercise, skipping. You can do staircase climbing. You can run up and down the stairs in your house. And this is also extremely good cardiac exercise. And of course, you can pace around in the garden or terrace or in the house if you have no other way of letting out some of your nervous energy. So exercise, if any form, is good, is great. Any questions on this so far? Are we all good? Seems everybody's fine. <clears throat> so next is, <clears throat> sorry, the immune boosters. So there are some things that are especially good for your immune system. And one of them is ginger. Now one can add ginger to many things. You can add ginger to a lot of your foods especially to dal, if you make uh, lentils, you can add ginger. 
But for those of you who prefer, you can also make ginger tea. Now, when I say ginger tea, it's more like a ginger drink. All you need to do is grate fresh ginger into a cup, pour hot water into it, and it's done. And this is a great immune booster. You can also have dried ginger if you don't have fresh ginger. If you run out of fresh ginger, you can also use dried ginger. So it's, it's a powder. So you can use that as well. And uh, you can add this to almost anything that you're cooking. Another great immune booster is lemon. <clears throat> Lemon has a lot of vitamin C and you can have this every morning. It's perfect to beginning for the day before breakfast to start with a lemon and honey drink. So you can just squeeze out the juice of half a lemon, add a dash of um, honey and a pinch of salt. Add some water to it, mix it, and you're ready. Water can be lukewarm if you want, but normal room temperature water is also fine. <clears throat> and finally, the third most amazing immune booster is turmeric. Turmeric is this amazing spice and you can add this to almost anything and everything dal, vegetables, curries of all kinds. And um, those who like can also have turmeric with milk. It's uh, in India, or at least in North India, it's called haldi dood. And these days it has become a little bit popular as golden milk or turmeric latte. Nice um, names and good marketing for something which was uh, given um, as a kind of a <clears throat> remedy. In fact, it's Ayurvedic remedy, which I remember as a child, I hated it, but my mom made it for me. I had to have it only when I was not feeling too well. And um, I'm happy that some creative minds have made um, turmeric milk into something cool and they call it turmeric latte. And uh, you can have it with milk and honey, or you can just have it, as most Indians know, in almost every single dish that we make. And it's a great immune booster. Anybody has any questions on food? <clears throat> Should I want to ask anything on food right now or any other um, um, tips that you may have for, for everybody here? No tips? Okay, in that case. So the next one uh, is anxiety management. Yeah. Now, I do have a lot of people who ask me what they should do because they have a lot of fears, they're worried, they're anxious, and they want to have techniques. Well, there are definitely uh, many different techniques in yoga that help. <clears throat> a traditional practice, which has been, is known since thousands of years, since millennia, is prayer. It's the simplest and the most direct practice, and everybody can do this. Most of us have learned to repeat prayers that are ready-made. So we look for prayers in the Gita, in the Bible, or in some other scriptures. We always say that the best prayer is a prayer in your own words. 
in your mother tongue, whatever that may be. So pray in your own words, asking for strength and courage. This is the highest form of prayer. You can also pray in your own words, expressing gratitude for what you have. So while you may have difficulties, there are others who are in a far more difficult situation. So express gratitude for what you do have. And also pray for others, especially in times like this, we need to pray for others. It also helps us get out of our own self. Selfishness or self-centeredness is also the cause of all disease. And when you start thinking about others <clears throat> in your prayer, you will expand. It's an expansion of consciousness. So prayer is one of the best practices for anxiety management. Internal dialogue is another. While internal dialogue is a different form of prayer, but prayer is when you're speaking to the divine part in you, internal dialogue is building up a relationship with the mind, trying to manage your anxiety and fears through a dialogue. This is not a monologue where you just talk to yourself, trying to convince yourself that everything is okay, Rather, it's a dialogue where you allow your fears and anxiety to rise and you confront it and dialogue with it. Another practice is Shavasana. Shavasana is a very simple relaxation practice. And if it's possible for you to do that, then of course it's very useful. Uh, some people who may be in a very, very anxious situation may find themselves feeling uncomfortable and restless even in Shavasana. And if that is the case, then prayer and internal dialogue are probably better for you. And of course, the breathing practices. There are three simple breathing practices that are very useful. First one, diaphragmatic breathing. This is something for everyone. This is a very, very useful practice. I had... I would request the person who is uh, to go on mute, please. Mute. Yes. Sorry about that. I had to mute the person. So I have put up the link of diaphragmatic breathing in the Facebook groups. And so you can have a look at that. And Please uh, remain muted. Uh, <clears throat> unless, of course, you have questions to ask, you can also use the chat in that case because some of you have background noise. So diaphragmatic breathing is a practice that you can do anytime, anywhere. And this is a harmless practice. And at the same time, uh, a foundational practice and the most important practice that you should learn. You should be breathing diaphragmatically at all times on a regular basis. Having established diaphragmatic breathing, you can also start with equal breathing and two to one breathing. And equal breathing means breathe in equal number of counts as you breathe out. 
exhalation and inhalation should be equal. In two to one breathing, exhalation should be double the length of the inhalation. This is very relaxing. If you don't know these practices, I will put up a few links in the next few days in the that first satsang group. And so you can have a look at that if you don't know this. Are there any questions regarding breathing or internal dialogue or prayer? This is a question from Pawan. Uh, should we take two or three meals a day? Um, yes, Pawan, um, two or three, depending on your level of hunger. Normally we say three meals are good. Breakfast, and lunch and dinner. You can have, of course, a cup of tea or whatever you like. And some people like to also have a little snack. It really depends on your personal routine. It's always better to have smaller meals and have three, two or three smaller meals than to have one large meal or, you know, two large meals. Because with the large meal, you feel very heavy afterwards. That's uh, tamasic and... Um, some people are then not able to work after that, not able to concentrate. It makes you sluggish and lazy. <clears throat> so it's always better to have light meals and spread out during throughout the day rather than have one or two very large meals. Okay. Any questions on breathing or internal dialogue or prayer. Okay, not as yet. All right. So anxiety management then. Office rules or rather home office rules. Now, those of you who have started working from home, there is the danger of your working life taking over your regular family life or your relaxation part. And you need to keep a balance. So one important thing is that you have special times and you stick to those times. And between work, you also take breaks. So not that you're just working at home and you just start in the morning and you keep working all day because you using work as a kind of escape. Or if you're living alone and now you're locked down there in that situation, you need to take breaks and have your regular timings. Also, Keep a place in the house, a space in the house, which is a quiet space where you can retreat. This means this place is a bit sacred. It could be a corner. It could be a room if you have an extra room, a spare room, or just a corner in the house, a quiet corner in your bedroom or a quiet corner somewhere where nobody will disturb you. When you are in that place, it's clear to everyone in the house you don't want to be troubled. You need your space for yourself. And even children understand this. When you connect it to time, little children are not able to understand, oh yes, mommy needs her time now, or daddy needs his time. But when mommy or daddy is in that certain space, they do understand better that they're not allowed to go there and they should not disturb. So you, knew, you need time to withdraw and time to relax. And you need a dedicated working space. So if you start working all over the house, everything is associated with work. You need a space which is associated with work. So have a, a table 
or a corner, just like you have a corner for quiet space, you can have a corner for work. And that space also is sacred. And your children and family should know that when you are working there in that space, you are not to be disturbed. <clears throat> so these are just a small few tips on how to manage a home office. How to manage kids. So what do we do <laughs> with kids? Well, it's, I'm sure that those of you who are parents are great parents and doing a great job. And it's of course, no doubt, very difficult to keep kids entertained all the time. You also have to homeschool them now. And it's a hard balancing act between work, family responsibilities, as well as homeschooling your children. It's gonna be a tough time. I know it, you know it, but we're gonna get through it. So first thing, if you have children, create a routine and stick to it. Set alarms, set alerts. Your routine is gonna save you. Share your responsibilities with your life partner or any other family member, so you get some time off kids. You need time off kids, otherwise you're gonna go crazy. So some kind of time management, space management is required. You have to keep the kids occupied with stress-free activities, which means it's not always about studying and homework, and putting pressure on them to do something. But it should be also stress-free. It should be something they also enjoy doing and maybe also something you enjoy doing with them. So I'm sure that there are many, many ideas and fun things to do with kids. Painting, dance, music, all kinds of games. There are many things one can do. You just have to be creative. The parents do need a kid-free zone. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to have a quiet space or corner where you can retreat. And the kids do need to understand and learn to respect that. Many of the kids are also themselves feeling stressed right now because they don't quite understand what's happening. There's a crisis and they are afraid as well of getting sick because they're hearing about these things from their friends. So explain to them gently what the problem is, but you will have to take care what the age of the children are, is. You know, you can't tell a very young child about virus and stuff like that because that's really scary. So, Be careful about how you explain these things, but when you explain them in a gentle way and assure them that you will be there to protect them, they should be okay. And another thing, do not scare the kids with doomsday scenarios. <clears throat> so if you're gonna honestly talk about it, don't paint a, a really dark, gloomy picture be mindful of the fact that kids also feel anxiety. They also get stressed. Sometimes when you are under extreme pressure, you forget that the kids also feel pressure. So be mindful of that. How to keep kids busy. So I, I'm not going to take much time on this because the parents really know best how to keep the kids busy and entertained. And this is just a couple of ideas. And um, maybe you have more ideas that you'd like to share. So very quickly, you can teach them cooking depending on the age, you can even cook with three year olds, they love to do things like mixing stuff and pouring things into bowls and so they can and they feel very happy when they are successful in something they feel a sense of achievement you can make a family album with them so finally all the photos that you had collected but never got around to making a family album now is the time to make the family album 
If they're a little bit older, you can make a kind of a lockdown scrapbook or diary where they can collect some pictures and stuff and <laughs> write about their experiences, what they have gone through in this lockdown, what, what they feel. It's a, it's a nice ventilation, uh, ventil for them to let out their emotions so they can do that. Another thing that you can do is teach them to pray. It's a very sad, but modern families don't teach the children to pray. And um, the children grow up sometimes without um, a connection to something higher. And so teach them to pray in their own words. Some of us um, have certain cultural backgrounds. So if you're coming from a Christian background, you may want to teach them some Christian prayer or Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever it may be. Sure, do that. But you can also teach them how to pray in their own words. Talk to the divine within. And that by doing that, you're going to you know, set a wonderful foundation for them. As I mentioned earlier, routine is really the most important thing for children. Eat, sleep, and exercise at all regular times. So you should have a very nice planned timetable for them and follow this. This will save your life. Otherwise, you're going to go nuts. So this is very important for children. So that was about children. Any questions so far on any of the topics that we have covered up till now? Kids, food, techniques, or is everybody very um, clear on this subject? Okay, so <clears throat> some of you, of course, don't have kids. So you have a little bit more time and maybe you don't have that much work to do or maybe you don't even have home office. So you need to keep yourself occupied. Yeah, that's very important. Those who are under occupied have the danger of falling into some kind of a depression or sadness, boredom, however you want to call it. So keep yourself occupied. You can write a journal, create a, a lockdown scrapbook, catch up on reading on books, join online courses. There are lots of online courses that you can join. You can do your sadhana, that is your meditation practice if you have guidance. You can download the app Duolingo and learn a language. If you spend half an hour a day, you can easily learn a foreign language every day, half an hour. And Duolingo is a free app and you can use that. It's really a wonderful thing you can do. Use this time productively. You can tidy up your apartment and cupboards, declutter. Some of you obviously um, know how to use computers and laptops, but there are people in the family maybe who don't, <clears throat> and you can help them perhaps, teach them how to use a laptop or computer. Be creative, try your hand at painting, singing, music, poetry, or just hand works. And there are of course lots and lots of other things that you can do to keep yourself busy. So, one of the last slides is test it positive, don't panic. It's quite scary when you see these numbers, rising infections, and it's even scarier seeing the rising mortality rates. But don't panic, because while people are dying, the fact is, as yet, most of the people 
who are infected recover. During this time, don't come up with some heavy routines. Try to join online courses, complete projects, read your long list of books. No, now is the time to rest, drink lots of water or liquids, eat healthy food and get lots and lots of sleep. And that's the way. And of course you can have the, your immune boosters. And so you spend this time in recovering and not keeping yourself really busy, but just recovering because the immune system needs time to fight this new enemy. And last but not the least, be grateful for all you have. Stop complaining. We all know it's difficult, not an easy time to be here, but stop complaining, look around you, you will find someone in greater trouble than you. Help her, help him. Be grateful for what you do have. Stop complaining about what you don't have and what problems you have and all these kind of negativities. Encouraging those negativities, they will keep growing, but those will not help you. Negative thinking is not going to help you. So, we are at the end of our presentation on how to survive lockdown. Is there um, anything you would like to share? Maybe some of you have your own little tips you would like to share, or are there any questions? Or are there any, any of the slides that you want to have a look at again? Then we can do so. Please remember, I, have, I am recording this session and it will also be uploaded to YouTube. So you can always go back to YouTube and have a look at it again if you missed out on anything and you'd like to look at something again. Um, Otherwise, um, let me know, are there any questions? I'm waiting to take your questions. Radhika, G, I have a question. Yes, yes, Fisher. Sure. So when we do prayers, sometimes it turns into a monologue of yes. uh, what you want and desires. Is there any tips on that? Because sometimes I find it just turns into things I want <laughs> um, to happen, yeah. basically. Yes, yes. That's the time you have to stop. That's when you stop, that maybe your prayer time is no longer a prayer time, it's becoming a time for uh, something else. And so you simply stop. You can also create a little discipline there where you say the prayer time is fixed just a few minutes. One doesn't need to do prayer for hours and hours, right? I mean, normally we talk about prayer in three forms. One is asking for strength and uh, to help us focus and practice sankalp, to have some, some sankalp, courage to go through difficult times. Mm -hmm. That's the first form of prayer. Second is the prayer expressing gratitude for what you have. And third I mentioned was a prayer for everyone else. Um, out of compassion, that's a compassionate prayer. So, for either of these three, you don't need a very long time. And if you have, if you're doing your prayers at the beginning of your practice, your sadhana, then you can keep approximately a couple of minutes, two, three minutes before for a prayer of strength and sankalp. At the end of the practice, a couple of minutes, prayer of expressing gratitude and praying for those who need uh, this divine grace at this difficult time. So a couple of minutes before and a couple of minutes after. So if you have that in mind, at some point of time you realize your mind is just wandering off into something else. It's not praying anymore. So that's one way of, of doing it. It's, uh, I hope that helps. Okay. 
<clears throat> Any other questions? Nadika says, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Sometimes a prayer is a feeling expressed in a few moments. Does that count as prayer? Of course. Yes, of course it counts as prayer. Prayer is not something only um, expressed in words. In fact, words are the most superficial form of prayer. The deepest form of prayer is a feeling, is a bhava, as we call it. And that's a feeling of deep devotion. And that is, for example, towards the end, as I mentioned, a prayer expressing gratitude and a compassionate prayer. That if that is not just words, but if it is an emotion, it's a deep bhava, that's the most beautiful prayer of all prayers. And that's how really a prayer should be. And that can sometimes arise spontaneously. Uh, we are talking right now of creating a discipline or a routine of practicing prayer, but a spontaneous prayer which rises from the heart is the most beautiful form. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes. Yes, thank you for the tips, Radhika Ji. Much appreciated. Thank you um, that I can serve. That's something I do to serve in this tradition and, um, so to say, small little thing. It's not much. Any other questions? Some of you have come in late. I don't know if you saw the slides in the presentation, but this is being recorded. So you can also then watch the entire thing on YouTube when uh, you have the time. I don't know if some of you got the timing wrong because some of you are just joining in now. Did you get the timing wrong? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there are no questions, then we will end the meeting here. And for those of you who came in late, unfortunately, perhaps because you got the timing wrong, you can catch up on this on YouTube. I will also post it in the group then once it's uh, put up on YouTube. So. No questions, no further tips from anybody else. If not, then we can end the session here. So thank you everybody for, for joining me. And before I um, end, I just wanted to tell you um, that due to this lockdown right now, uh, I also am planning most likely from Friday onwards, a series uh, called Who Am I? It's, um, I don't know exactly how long the series will take. It's a series of um, 12 to 14 questions, which will be covered. And so these questions will be answered in the series and it may take um, three, sessions it may take six sessions but we will have the sessions every day at the same time the time will be then uh, 5 p.m germany 8 30 p.m india and next time i will also put maybe london for those who are joining from the us i will put maybe atlanta so that um, you have a better feeling of the time all right, and Canada, I don't know how many places I'll get, but I will try. <laughs> try to put in a couple of different places so you can orient yourself to those timings. Okay, nice having you all. Take care. Namaste. Thank you. Bye-bye.